Uh, for the past several weeks, as part of a larger discussion, we've been learning and, and revisiting some spiritual habits that have been practiced for centuries by Christians. And today, we're just going to go right into practicing one without any real deep teaching uh, on, uh, on this. Um, I'm just going to just say a few words about it before we get into it, just to really uh, help us to get into what we're doing here. So today, we're going to engage in the practice of confession. Now, typically, when we think of confession, we usually think of it in terms of more uh, somber or even negative terms, and like, you know, the confession of sin. And it's just like, oh boy, draws me into, you know, a reflection of the things where I, where I fell short. Um, but confession is so much larger than just the confession of sin or shortcoming or, or things like that. Confession is, is much larger and much more beautiful. Yes, it encompasses that, but it encompasses more. And when we look at that word confession and we take it to its roots, uh, the word confession really just means an acknowledgement so an acknowledgement can be neutral, it can be positive, it can be something more difficult, but it's just an acknowledgement. We, we acknowledge before God and we acknowledge before one another what is. So we can confess and acknowledge not just difficult things like sin, but also positive things like acknowledge and confess our love, acknowledge and confess our faith. Things like that. So within the Christian, within the historical Christian tradition, there are several, several kinds of spiritual practices of confession. Confessing our sins, confessing our faith, and confessing our hearts, whether that be in thanksgiving or lament or something in between. And why do we do this? Very briefly, we confess our sins. I'm just going to... Without visiting all these scriptures, I'm just going to riff off of them really fast. We confess our sins that we may receive forgiveness, cleansing, healing, that our prayers may be heard. We confess our faith as an act of faith, demonstrating that we are a saved people. And then also we confess our laments and our thanksgiving to grieve, to seek God's help while in pain as an act of faith that we might grow in faith and hope and love and know his peace. I just want to look at the words of Jesus here in John chapter 3. Everybody knows John 3.16. Oops, sorry, you want to take a picture of that? Go ahead. <laughs> there you go. Everybody knows the words of Jesus in, or the words in, uh, in, in John 3.16. But just beyond John 3.16, these words of Jesus are so important. Jesus says, and this is the judgment, that light has come into the world. And people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Now riffing off of what Jesus says here, the Apostle John writes in 1 John chapter 1, if we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Then immediately following these verses is the uh, well-known liturgical passage that we're going to do here in our liturgy today that you know, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us, but if we confess our sin, then God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. See, this whole thing about coming out of darkness and into the light involves confession. And as Jesus' people, we choose him. We choose the light rather than darkness. We choose to walk in light. And walking in light involves confession. 
confession of faith, confession of love, confession of the good things, confession of our laments, confession of our sins. Walking in the light involves confession. We, as followers of Jesus, are a confessional people. This is what it looks like to walk in the light. No things are hidden. Everything can be seen. And when everything can be seen, it is known these people are walking with God. Because God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Nothing hides. So with all of that said, let us join now in a time of confession. And we're going to start together first with the confession of our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we're going to move into the prayers for the confession of our sins. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. going to read Psalm 51, a Psalm of David. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth and sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the innermost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. 
Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. In your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be righteous sacrifices, whole burnt offerings to delight you. Then bowls will be offered on your altar. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Now we're just going to take a moment of silence. And I encourage you just to be open to the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And if there's anything that you need to bring before the Lord in this moment of silence, I encourage you, bring it before the Lord. Confess it before him. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for your sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Through his Holy Spirit, he cleanses us and gives us power to proclaim the mighty deeds of God who called us out of darkness into the splendor of his glorious light. By the authority of Christ in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus, I forgive you all of your sins. Receive the forgiveness of your heavenly Father. Together. God, our Father, 
By the cross of your son, you reconciled the world to yourself, enabling us to live in love and harmony. We thank and praise you for the forgiveness of sins and the precious gift of peace. Help us forgive each other and to establish justice and solidarity throughout the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now, before we come to the table, we pray as the Lord taught us together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen.